Today here in the office we have HP's new top dog Chromebook, the Elite C1030. And this device is important for a few reasons, mainly because it helps us have another high-end Chromebook to actually care about. 2020 has been kind of tough on this segment, and if you go back and watch our best Chromebooks of 2020, you'll hear me talk about that exact thing, that since mid-tier Chromebooks have gotten so good, the high-end Chromebooks have kind of gotten forgotten. And this new Elite C1030 device brings a lot of good stuff to the table, a premium build, and some cool functionality that we haven't seen in other Chromebooks. So we're excited to have this thing in the office and to see what it's all about. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're awesome at what they do, and that is keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN, where you can learn more and get started today. All right, so let's jump in the box. HP has already set some stuff up on this uh, for us because it did come from them with parallels installed. So this is probably gonna be a managed setup situation. So we'll, we'll take a look at it in guest mode. Um, charger wise, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, just a block, yeah, some return stuff, basic paperwork as we always expect, but this is what we're here for. And I'll be honest, this thing was announced back, I think in August, I believe if, if I'm correct there and we were excited about it back then. There were some delays, you know, good old 2020 stuff, and we've had to wait on this thing. And I, I've really thought the whole time that this thing brings so many good things to the table. As long as it feels nice in the hand, it's gonna kind of deliver on the promise of kind of the next really great high-end Chromebook. Because ultimately, with devices like the Spin 713, for instance, it's got a high-res display, it's an aluminum build, it's mil-spec rated, and a Core i5, 128 gig SSD, and you know eight gigs of RAM for 630 bucks MSRP, and then it drops to like $530 a lot. And so when you got that much horsepower and those kind of specs for that kind of price, $1,000 Chromebooks become a really, really tough sell unless they deliver on all that stuff and give you some sort of better tactile feel and better look. And I can already tell you, just handling this thing for a second, that the feel of this thing is pretty on point. So think something more like um, the HP Chromebook uh, 14, X360 14C. If you've handled one of those, just it just has a nice feel to it. This thing kind of takes that up a notch. It just feels fantastic. And it's got these nice chamfered edges around the sides. Hopefully that's picking up on camera a little bit. But so it's all aluminum. Uh, the top and the bottom feel like the same uh, material, which for Chromebooks is kind of a cool thing. We usually end up getting like plastic bottoms and all this weird stuff. So it feels really good. It's under three pounds. HP did send us the like really tricked out version of this thing. So Core i7, 256 gigs of NVMe storage, 16 gigs of RAM. The one that's available for consumers generally across the board is the 999 version. And it comes with the uh, Core i3, so 10th gen Core i3. Uh, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of NVMe. There's gonna be plenty of, of power for just about any user, and you'll see as we kind of get into this all the other cool stuff that comes along for the ride. But you'll get the same chassis here, the same port selection, and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about those real quick. On the side, we have USB A uh, here, a USB C, micro SD card slot, and then around the other side, another USB Type C, uh, Kensington lock, your power and volume rocker. And then it looks like the camera uh, privacy switch is on there too. So that's a nice touch. It's, uh, you know, it's no different than the shade that slides over uh, on top, but it's nice to have it there. And then headphone microphone jack. But again, these nice like squared off edges just make this thing feel great. And I can tell you because I've been using the Acer Spin 713 for most of 2020 at this point, this one comes with the same 13.5 inch three by two screen. It's the resolution's different. But this thing is a way tighter package. I don't have the, the Spin 713 here to, to put it against. We'll do that kind of stuff for the review. But this thing just feels like a tight, tight package, like a, a 13 or a 12 inch Chromebook should feel. And that's because as you'll see here in just a second, it's got super tiny bezels. Oh, and it's got that sweet HP logo, that new logo that I think is just brilliant, honestly. Uh, it's four lines. It makes HP out of four lines. It's awesome. So let's open this thing up and I'm fully expecting um, 
Yep. So uh, we're I don't have the password for this thing yet. Uh, I'm, we're waiting on on that to show up. But um, let me actually go into guest mode so that we can kind of see a few things here. There we go. That's good. I'll try to turn the brightness down a little bit. So this thing comes with 400 nits of brightness on the screen, uh, which is pretty sweet. Uh, there is a model that you can get. They don't ship it just yet. That's going to have uh, a thousand nit screen. Uh, this is not that. I don't even think you can get that yet. And it's the one that has the digital privacy screen. Uh, they're not shipping that one yet. From the looks of it, it's just not even available to order yet. So my guess is sometime in 2021, you'll be able to upgrade to that thing. But crazy bright screen with, again, a digital privacy screen. So you'd only be able to see if you're looking at it on angle, everything else off angle would turn kind of a dark gray or black so that if you're on a plane or something, you have sensitive information, you can look at that stuff and not have to worry about it. This model does not have that. However, this one does have uh, what HP is saying is an upgraded screen, basically. So this one is an anti-glare 400 nit uh, touch screen. And, and you can probably see it, probably catch that a little bit on camera. Um, because it's anti-glare, some of the off-angle stuff is going to look a little bit dimmer until you're exactly on angle with this thing. But uh, you can already tell around the edges just this super narrow bezel and probably most notably a super narrow bezel at the bottom. Across the bottom, you have to have room for hinges. That's just the way convertibles work. So you're never going to get this narrow of a hinge on the very bottom of a convertible device. Just not going to work out that way. But because this one is 3 by 2 uh, whenever you convert into tablet mode, you get a nicer, kind of taller screen aspect ratio. And then if you flip this way, um, you'll get a, a more tablet-like feel. And again, at three pounds with a keyboard on the back and all that kind of stuff, it, you're not going to wield this thing as a tablet all the time. But I can tell you right now, just holding it like this in my hands, this isn't a terrible tablet feel. Now, again, I think something like the Samsung uh, Galaxy Chromebook or the original Pixelbook did tablet mode in a convertible better than this does because there's a gap here. You know, this is a rounded edge Chromebook. So there's a gap right here that kind of feels odd. That's just kind of part of the experience there. Ooh, there's a nice little magnet that holds it closed. So that's a nice touch. Uh, we don't have a USI stylus in here with us, but USI compatible as well. Um, let's see, we've got backlit keys. Um, and across the top, you have some unique keys too because uh, ultimately, this is an enterprise-ready uh, Chromebook, so there's going to have you know some different keyboard layouts that that we're starting to see on these Chromebooks. So this one actually has keyboard brightness right here. So there's buttons for keyboard brightness and buttons for screen brightness. So there's four buttons up there instead of the two we normally get. Uh, it looks like we have a screenshot button. We've talked about that. I didn't realize that was coming in this Chromebook, but screenshot button. Uh, yeah, so there, boom, took a screenshot. Uh, and then your basic other buttons are there. Uh, again, you have multi-stage backlighting. Um, we have a fingerprint scanner up here, so we'll be able to set that up. This nice, large, wide trackpad that feels I, not surprisingly great. HP has been making really great trackpads uh, for the last few years. This thing feels great. Click feels very even, nice, smooth, stable, again. Same exact aluminum on the uh, keyboard deck here. So we've got all the same aluminum around this thing. A very nice firm build, like the, there's no creaking going on here. Um, and again, not surprising, a very nice keyboard. Let me get my eyes on this screen real quick and tell you that, yeah, I cranked up to full brightness. That's, that's definitely has what looks like a 400 nit screen on it. Uh, that's what they're advertising on this. Again, I don't I don't love anti-glare screens, but if you're about that, uh, it is anti-glare. Looks like it's polarized in some in some fashion. But ultimately, the the standout feature here is the fact that this is a three by two screen. So again, you're getting a 13.5 diagonal measure, three by two aspect ratio. So just like the Spin 713, this gives you the height of a 1080p screen. Just kind of cut off the or a 1080p. 15.6 inch screen, I'm sorry, just cut off some of the sides. So when you set this up next to a 15.6 inch Chromebook, you're getting the same height on your screen. Now this one is not as high res as the 713. This is a 1080p-ish screen. So it's 1920 by 1280, I believe, uh, is what makes a three by two measure. And honestly, let me, again, let me look at it. Yeah, it's hard to pick out pixels in that. Um, and so that's that's pretty impressive too. And I can just tell you, picking this thing up, holding it in my hands, the, the thinness, the lightness of it, uh, just the overall build quality. This is Pixelbook level build. This is MacBook type build. This is Galaxy Chromebook type build. And that's 
ultimately kind of what you pay for when you decide to go and get a premium device instead of the mid-tier device. Is it going to be like wildly faster than the, the X360 14 or the 713 uh, from Acer? Not really, no. It's there, There's nothing else they can do internally to make these things like crazy faster than those mid-range Chromebooks. What they can do is add a better overall experience uh, to the way it feels when you hold it, when, it, when you use it, when you open it up, and just uh, making the external experience of using the Chromebook a better one. And clearly, they've done that with this thing. Uh, obviously, we've got to review it. We've got to spend time with this device. We've got to uh, put it through its paces. Obviously, we're going to try parallels out on it uh, and just see how the screen holds up in real-world conditions. But I can tell you uh, at first blush with this thing that it feels fantastic. It feels premium. So it doesn't have all the pieces that are like misaligned or a little a little rough around the edges. It just feels really, really well put together and I'm looking forward to spending time with it uh, to get the full review done. But that's it for this one. Guys, if you like this video, go down there and give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos like this one, including the full review of this device. Until next time, we'll see you.